Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah During this holy month of Ramadan and outside of the holy month of Ramadan we should make dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and make istighfar and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the beautiful supplications of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <clears throat> that the prophet alayhi salatu wa salam advised Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with comes in the hadith where the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ya Mu'adh Wallahi inni l'ahabbak فَلَا تَدْعَى فِي دُبْرَ كُلُّ الصَّلَاةِ أَنْ تُقُولْ أَلَّهُمَّ أَعَنِّي عَلَى ذِكْرِكَ وَشُكْرِكَ وَحُسْنِ بَعْدِتِكَ رواه أبو داود في باب الاستغفار وهو حديث صحيح وأخرجه نسائي in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam advised Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala in with beautiful advice. And he likewise established that he loved Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala in. And so therefore we should love Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he said O Mu'adh Wallahi by Allah verily I love you therefore do not leave at the end of every prayer do not forget to say Allahumma a'anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibaditika. O Allah, I seek your assistance in remembering you and being grateful to you and in perfecting my worship of you. In this supplication, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he advised Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with, there are immense uh, benefits for the mu'min to take from this hadith. And this hadith actualizes Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, meaning that the servants Worship is all directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the only one worthy of worship in all ibadah goes to him tabarak wa ta'ala. So we see that this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this beautiful supplication which we all need to memorize and we've already talked about this uh, supplication before and it's written out and you can search for it the, in, uh, from the du'as that we studied previously but we see here in this supplication as we mentioned that it is an actualization of Tawheed al-Ibadah and that here the servant or the one supplicating with this supplication is pleading with Allah O oh Allah, pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Na'anni, assist me. You're pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, to assist you in remembering Him, to make dhikr. So it shows we need assistance. And it shows complete humility to beg the one who 
you've never seen, who you believe in, to humble yourself, asking for Him to help you worship Him. Asking Him to assist you in correcting your ibadah to Him, to Barak wa Ta'ala alone. So that is, that's uh, something very important for us to, to reflect and ponder on, on this simple supplication. So you're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance in remembering Him, making dhikr, remembering His divine names and attributes, saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar, you know, all glory belongs to Allah, all praise belongs to Allah, Allah is the greatest. All of this is the servant worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and opening his or her chest with humility before your Lord in order to seek his assistance in helping you to worship him better. And it's a showing of gratitude and asking for assistance in showing gratitude. Because how many ni'am, how many favors and blessings do we receive that we can't even begin to count? Impossible to count. Impossible just the fact that we were able to break our fast. And from that, we were able to fill our stomachs. And in addition to that, the food was delicious. And on top of that, there was a multitude of different foods and fruits and water and dates. And on top of that, you were able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spend that time with your family or spend that time with your loved ones or spend that time with your brothers or your sisters in faith. And on top of that, you still had your health afterwards and you're able to breathe, you're able to hear, you're able to see. It's impossible to count the benefits and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And most of the people don't know. Think of people who are atheists, don't even believe in Allah. Or how many comments do I get from ex-Muslims? I work with an ex-Muslim even. Someone who was born into a Pakistani family and, and all this other stuff. He doesn't worship Allah anymore. He doesn't even believe in Allah Tabarakatana and his deen anymore. Where's his thankfulness? Imma shakinin wa imma kafura. Either they are grateful or they are ungrateful. Ungrateful with disobedience. Ungrateful with kufr. With disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can, you how can you disbelieve in Allah when you were dead and He brought you to life? Then He will cause you to die again. Then He will resurrect you again. Then to Him you will return. But we're not grateful. We're not grateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and assist us to be grateful. This is why, coming back to the supplication, why we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika. Oh Allah, please help me. Please help me to remember, <coughs> to remember you and to be grateful to you and to perfect my ibadah to you. The only way your ibadah can be perfected is what? Is those two conditions we talked about before. Ikhlas lillah. That you're doing the worship strictly to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's get to some of the benefits we can gain from this beautiful hadith. And this beautiful dhikr. One of the benefits that we gain from this hadith 
is that first, looking at some of the words, some of the, the definitions, Allahumma anni. Oh Allah, assist me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Mu'adh by his hand, radiallahu ta'an, and then he said, O oh Mu'adh, wallahi, I love, verily I love you. And do not cease at the end of your prayer, end of every prayer, to say this supplication. So here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving the advice to Mu'adh, beautiful prophetic advice, to help Mu'adh come closer to Allah and remember Allah and show gratefulness to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allahumma anni, O oh Allah, assist me. This is atlab mink al own. It is seeking from you, meaning from Allah assistance not from the dead not from the grave not from our relatives who are far away from us not from our sheikh who's far away from us not from the sheikh that died and we built a big tomb over his grave not from the one you sacrifice animals and put at his grave nope they can't help you but rather this is seeking this is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleading with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Tawheed al-Uluhiya, showing that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and asking for His assistance. And you're asking for His assistance, fi fi'l ata'at. You're asking His assistance to do acts of obedience to Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, ala dhikrika, you know, in, in remembering you, meaning seeking assistance in remembering you. So when the Prophet ﷺ said, dhikrika, or ala dhikrika, you know, I need assistance, uh, that seeking assistance in the supplication to remember you, meaning remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dhikrika, this remembrance, is done with the heart, it's done with the tongue, and what enters into that is every way in which you praise Allah and exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's mentioned in the Quran in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَحُسْنِ ibadatika. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the supplication, حُسْنِ ibadatika, uh, Perfecting, you know, seeking assistance from Allah to perfect your worship of Allah, that this goes back to what we mentioned before, those two conditions, that you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship, and that it's in accordance with the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We worship in accordance to the in according in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not uh Ahla Shirk wa Kufr wa Zandaka. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this regard Men amila amilin. Excuse me. Men amila amilin. Laysa alayhi amruna fuhu rad. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Whoever does a deed which is not in accordance with our affair, then it is rejected. Meaning that uh, uh, that deed of, ib of ibadah, the act of worship is rejected. If, for example, you know, we commit a new bid'ah, a new innovation in, in prayer, then that prayer would be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fuhurad, kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do we benefit from this hadith? 
from the benefits of this hadith is this hadith shows us the manzil or the status of Mu'adh ibn Jabal Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and with in regards to that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised him and also he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Ya Mu'adh inni li inni li uh, uh, uhibbak O kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam He said ya muadh wallahi inni la uhibbuk O Allah I swear uh, uh, O, o muadh I swear by Allah that verily I love you So that shows the status of muadh And as we supplicate with another supplication Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbuk وَحُبَّ مَنْ يَحُبَّكْ وَحُبَّ لِكُلِّ عَمَلٍ بَلَّغْنِي حُبَّكْ Oh Allah, Allahumma inni yas'alaka hubbuk, I, I, I ask you for your love. Because we want Allah to love us. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, because what you find from a lot of the Sufis, they say, I love Allah so much. And they make dhikr. But as the Salaf used to say, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions this, the affair is not that you love Allah, but it's that Allah loves you. Because you might be illustrating love for Allah, but in fact you are you have bid'ah and you have shirkiyat and you have kufriyat, which is not really illustrating love for Allah, and Allah does not love you if he's not giving you tawfiq in your ibadah. So in the supplication, Allahumma alaka hubbuk, O Allah, I ask you for your love and love for those you love. Well, that goes back to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves His Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, and He loves those who His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves, and therefore we should love those who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam loved. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows the beautiful. Akhlaq or manners of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that he was gentle with his his, his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu and we need this madrasa we need this this schooling we need this tarbiyah we need this kind of education this educative effect when we're teaching people and when we're learning we need that this is not what we've been teaching people this is mal asif shadid may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many sins but we didn't know this really and we didn't know how to convey the message many of us and so we were harsh with the people we turned the people away we distanced the people from the madhab of the salaf we distanced the people from the book of allah and the son of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam we distanced the people from the minhaj of the salaf we did that because we didn't know tarbiyah we weren't really following the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَتْقُلُ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِدُ وَالْفَاهِشَ الْبَدِيهِ There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than beautiful manners and verily law hates wicked and simple, simple wicked sins and, and speech and wicked speech wasted speech we, we didn't know that some of us didn't and some of the, some of the people were just so harsh and stern with the people on batil, on ta'asim, on hizbiya. Instead of teaching that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he had the best of manners and called us to the best. The third benefit we can gain from this hadith Is that al mu'min either a habba ahu ahahu other thalika lahu wahbirhu be thalika al hub aladi hua fillah? That's beautiful, and that's also tarbiyah, that's also lessons in teaching. And that is the, the next benefit we gain from this hadith is that the mu'min, the believer, that 
if he loves his brother in faith, that he should show it. That's the asifat of the mu'min, is he shows it for his brother. And he tells him. And he tells him that he loves him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's from the sifat of the mu'mineen. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that this hadith also <coughs> affirms for us Ithbat al-ism al-musta'an that this is an affirmation of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-musta'an that you hear often that we say and this was from the tarbiyah of our shaykh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi Allah uh, al wadi Allah Yarhamu, he used to say, Wallahu Musta'an. And this is from Tarbiyah. And this is showing that we seek help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is from his names, Al Musta'an. It affirms that name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what also affirms that for us is in Surah Al Fatiha when we say and supplicate. And read in Surah Al Fatiha, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. It is you alone whom we worship. And it is you alone who we seek assistance. Isti'ana. Nasta'in. We seek help from you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in everything we do. An issue that is a benefit from this uh, text is when do we make this supplication? The scholars differ with regards to the statement where the Prophet sallallahu said, فَتَدْعَى fi." to do not leave this at the end of every prayer so in Arabic it may be a bit more nuanced does that mean after the prayer or does it mean during the before salam before taslim in the tashahud after making dua so, <coughs> so the scholars they differed over this <coughs> and uh, Sheikh Abdullah Al Basam, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatin Wasi, he said, Akhtar al Ulama ala Thani, wa Taifida ala Awul. He said, Most of the scholars, they hold the second view, and the second view is that the uh, that it is before the salam. So the meaning you're you're still in the prayer. Most of the scholars hold the view that uh, uh, most of the scholars hold the view. Af, uh, sorry, that it is after the after making taslim, and Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Ben Uthaymin, and others held that it was uh, before the taslim. And since now it's time for the salat, then. Uh, we will stop there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Nabi Muhammad.